The other major change is that I also am I'm encouraging students who are a part of my course uh, to go on and continue their relationship with the community partners. So they either will uh, have an internship with that partner or they'll, they'll align their student project, senior, like a senior project with that community partner, or they become part of the volunteer board. Um, but encouraging more of a continued relationship for the students and the partner. And, and I think that model is actually healthier than how I originally envisioned all of this. So in terms of logistics, reflection, assessment, um, when I, I sat down to think specifically about assessment, I said, this is really hard to pull these pieces apart. They're all just kind of intimately connected. Um, so a little bit about uh, how the logistics of the course is attached also to, to those other two pieces. Um, I have learned in the past 10 years that a lot of that framing and planning ahead is absolutely critical. Once you get to the place where the semester is starting, where the project is kicking off, if you haven't done a lot of that preliminary, preliminary preparation, it's hard to kind of do it on the fly and do it well. So investing a little bit more on, on that front end, important. I never take on more than four projects. Four is my magic number. I never take on more than four projects a semester. Um, I break my, my learning um, units up into four different components. Uh, and I try to keep my student teams either four or five students. So those are all things I've learned along the way. I've had semesters juggling five, even six projects. That wasn't good. That wasn't pretty. I've had teams of six students. That wasn't good. That wasn't pretty. Um, so, and I've, I've chunked my course in different manners, and four seems to work well. We've got two blocks, two units, each block, that seems to work well. The other thing I've learned, and this is going to sound silly, um, is the middle of the week, the middle of the day. So, I invite community partners actually to campus in order to avoid some of the scheduling issues that you run into with a lot of students, and because my course is focused more on uh, development of um, tools for managers and for administrators, I'm able to do this. My students do spend time with the community partner, but there's less of that in my class than there would be in other courses just because of the nature of what we're working on. Um, I schedule my class at noon, always, middle of the day, lunchtime, ding, ding, ding. Partners can come and visit. Um, the parking lots open up. It's easier to get them physically here. Middle of the week, Mondays and Fridays, forget it. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that's about all you have to work with. Okay. So these are things I've learned the hard way. So I'm just sharing them. Like I said, they sound silly, but critical, critical. Um, I'm a very heavy user, again, logistics of my Sakai Hub. Uh, I've used WebCT, Blackboard. I've, all my architecture has collapsed and been rebuilt several times. Um, I invite my community partners uh, into my Sakai Hub. Um, the community partners use forums to continue conversations with student teams when they're not able to be physically with them. That's been a, a huge proponent of, of making, making things work. The other part of what I think makes the process work for the students and the community partners, and the feedback to me has, has been improving over the years, is that I um, attach student interest to project development. So I take a really thorough read on who's coming into my class, who's drawn to the course, what's their background, what are they, what, what community topics are resonating with them. And then I do pitches at the beginning of the semester where community partners will come in and they'll pitch a kernel of an idea. And my students have to tell me why they believe they're a good fit for this project. So that's the first time they're doing a lot of self-reflection. What's their story? Who are they? What did they bring? What skills did they bring to the conversation? And I believe that that early reflection and that early alignment is a big part of what keeps them connected through the entire semester. So I do a lot of pre-selling. You'll see materials in there where I put the ideas in front of the students. I get their, their, their feedback. The other thing that that does is as soon as that alignment happens where was, the teams are identified, the community partner is feeling like, wow, these students are really invested. They've already had to write a proposal to say why they should be a part of this team. I, you know, this feels good. Um, so I don't have to do a lot of kicking this off, a lot of energy. They're ready, they're running, they're, they're going, they're, they're engaged. The other thing that I do, and I was talking to Richard about
about this at the beginning of, of the workshop. Um, reflection from the student standpoint, I have basically weaved that into the entire course. So my stu I do take snapshots. Uh, we do a lot of front end preparation. I take students through a sequence of, I call them personal context exercises. You don't have them in the packet, but I'm happy to share them if you're interested. A lot of it is about their filters. Who are they? Where are they from? How do they identify their own? How do they uh, describe their own story? And, and how do they bring that story to the table? How can they be better listeners now that they've acknowledged their story? So a lot of that kind of preparation. I do collect periodic feedback from students about how they're bringing their skills, their expertise, and their story to the process with the community partner. I do some of that publicly on my Sakai site, so we can have a, a full course-based discussion. I do some of it privately, so it's it's between, it's just the two of us, the student and I are engaged in a discussion and kind of debrief with each other. Um, the other forms of reflection at the very end of the semester, and you do have this material, there is a full, uh, very focused question, reflection about the experience. How did your discipline come into play? How, uh, what kind of skill sets were you using? Um, how did you practice the work of a professional proposal writer? So what was the professional practice? Um, what did you learn about uh, this, the, the issue that was at the core of the project you were working on? How are you better prepared to engage in the community as a professional once you leave the college experience? Most of my students are seniors, so they're really ready to have that transition discussion. So, so that reflection happens. Um, I ask project mentors periodically for their feedback, very formal feedback and also informally, about their student teams, about individual members of their student teams, about the process itself. Um, my, usually my community partners say, wow, you talk to us a lot. <laughs> Maybe too much, um, but I do a lot of email exchange and I do spend a lot of front end time with my partners before we kick off and then I try to engage at the middle of the semester to say, okay, is this process, is it working for you? What's, you know, what's working, what isn't? Um, so formal, informal, public, private, reflection, and then formal assessment. So the measures of success in my class have a lot to do with product. Um, they are generating 60 pages of proposal development materials, internal and external. But they're doing most of this in a collaborative writing context. So how do I get to individual student assessment in a collaborative context? It's tricky, it's tricky. I do a lot of um, observing through Sakai, by the way. I watch the process, I watch the drafting process, I watch who is actually developing materials. I'm a bit of a voyeur on my Sakai site. I'm monitoring, I mean, I, I sometimes engage. Uh, at times, uh, a group process will start to go awry. I will sometimes enter that process and try to support it. At other times, I stay out of it. If I think there's a learning opportunity there, I will stay out of it for a while. Um, so I use all the systems that I have, both online, informal, formal, with the community partners, with the students, uh, to try to just constantly uh, do a litmus test of how things are going. Um, I have had to learn to step back and let things get complicated had to learn to step back and let some of the process look like it was falling apart at times. And then try to re-engage and have us all come together and, and talk about what we could do differently to move forward in a more positive way. Um, it's hard not to overmanage this process, especially when you have the public component. You have people outside of the classroom kind of depending on this going well. Um, so I do tell my community partners on the front end, there will be times when you might be a little nervous about what's happening with your student team. Let me know you're nervous, but know that that may be purposeful. Um, and, and that took me a while. I was very much, this is how I taught the first two years. And then I started to loosen up a little. And then I discovered that the more time that I spent as kind of a guide and a to this experience, the more learning that was happening, and you know, without me in there trying to control every piece of it. 
So I know that seems odd since we're talking, we have assessment as kind of a, a, a background here. Um, but I think it's relevant. I think it's, it's, a, it's a part of the overall process. Um, so everything that, you know, a lot of what I have used uh, for assessment and reflection are in here. Um, I'm happy to answer any specific questions about process. Was that, did that give you a taste? Did I overwhelm or scare anyone away? I have been a cautionary tale, I will tell you, um, in my department, but that's getting better. They're now seeing me as, oh, you seem to be able to manage this, though. You seem to be, you know, happier with how this is working. And yeah, yes, yeah, so maybe less cautionary, more advocacy and venture. Pat, um, yes. I imagine oh. some sort of a reshuffling of the groups, you know, uh, may have happened along the way um, where you, the, uh, the alignment was not there uh, between the partners and the students in terms of their interests or expectations? Actually, surprisingly, no. No? I have never realigned. Um, and I think it comes from that first part of the process mm -hmm. where the students talk to me about their skill sets and their their interests and why this project in particular. The, the other piece is, I'm really methodical about this, I make sure that the projects that are pitched to the students, I already know a lot about the students. Um, I make sure that I have a project that has a music and arts overlay, I make sure I have a project that has a sustainability or environmental overlay, I get a lot of environmental studies majors, I get a lot of students with music and creative arts backgrounds, I make sure that I have a project that has a, some kind of educational programming feature, and then I have kind of a fourth project that I, I leave it out there until I figure out my student audiences. And so when they align with the projects, they almost, I, I think I have maybe one or two exceptions to this, but they get their first or their second project choice and nothing below that. So they know what they want, they know that you know, what their skills are. I do have to help them uh, sometimes kind of understand how going outside of their comfort zone part of this process and learning from each other instead of going off in isolation to practice the skills that they are the best at. I'm a really good editor. I'm going to go off in the corner and I'm going to edit. Well, that's great and I'm glad you're a really good editor. Help your other teammates be better editors. I'm a really good systems thinker. I hear this from the park students all the time. My communication man, my CMD majors, they're my systems folks. They're great. Um, but they'll say that. They're like, well, I can see the big picture of the system. I'm like, be trans a transparent thinker with your teammates and explain to them how it is that you see that system. Help them get better at that. Mm -hmm. So to me, the more diverse uh, student group I have, the better. They learn more from each other. They're able to translate across disciplines, which is very IC2020, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it is in that translation where that additional learning is happening. So back to your question, I actually haven't had to do any but your um, extensive community contact, it, it is, you know, but a extensive community contact um, is an asset on your side in terms of doing your homework on identifying your audience and having the luxury and picking, choosing community partners that match. You know, that. Yeah, that takes time, and that actually is a process that I think the Office of Civic Engagement and, and those of us on the committee can help with that. With that. I wasn't good at that at the beginning, and I did, I, I did have some community relationships already established, but now people are coming to me and saying we have a project, so I actually have a queue of, of projects. I also have a lot of repeat, which makes me feel good. Um, we've worked with Challenge uh, four different times. Um, I do uh, work with the Sustainability Center, the Green Resource Hub, and Sustainable Tompkins, each of those uh, several times, and now we're working on a merger for all three organizations, which is fabulous. But you're right, that process, that, that alignment, and identifying partners, that takes some support and some time before you, before you're ready to do that. So I think we can help with that.